Hey guys, uh, we're beginning here in front of the Christmas tree. We're in front of the Christmas tree again because we have some more packages to open, some more Christmas Christmas stuff, I guess. Yeah. This is from your sister and it's a present from me. I'm pretty sure. Okay, you're pretty sure. Pretty sure. It has a very distinct shape. I think we both <laughs> have a pretty good idea <laughs> of what is in this package. Maybe you do too. Maybe you can you can tell <laughs> what like, kind sure of package this is. What it is. What but kind of package this is. I think we know exactly yeah. what it is. Oh yeah. A hundred percent. Yes, there we go. It is Lethal White by Robert Galbraith. Very, very excited about this. Thank you so much, Jasmine, for sending this to me. I really, really appreciate it. When did I'm... it come out? When did it come out? Yeah, like... Oh, man. Uh, August or September? I think it came out October. Did it? I think so. No, it didn't. Yeah. It didn't come out in October. It came out in August or September. I'm going to look it up. September 18th. Oh. It came out in September 18th. I'm currently, actually, let me, let me show you. I mentioned a couple vlogs ago that I was, again, for the third time reading through this series, and I'm already on the fourth book again, this one, uh, Lethal White. I don't know if it'll even let you see that. I'm like, I don't even know how many hours, I have like seven hours left in the audiobook, and so I am very happy now to own the physical book. This is very good timing because I'm in the middle of it right now and for the second time for the third time for this the, is my third time reading this for the third time yes yeah. so I'm very this man I tell hey, you don't you can't even talk she's reading the hating game again this is for like the 16th time I finished it you finished it well she was reading Fifth it and time. she finished it Fifth well time. how many times have you read it this year this is the fifth time you've only read it this year oh, okay she read it five times this year so I don't feel too bad. I I have been in the mood for reading, but I've mostly just been in the mood for like detective fiction recently. And this is my favorite detective fiction that I've ever read. So I just keep being in the mood for it. We also got a package from my maman um, and my dad too. <laughs> but really, oh, so we're not allowed to open these right now. They can go oh, under the tree. I was like, what did your mom send us? I know what they are now. Yeah, there, so. It's very obvious that they are pajamas. pajamas. <laughs> Her mom does pajamas for the whole family every year. Yeah, so. And these are ours and we'll open them Christmas morning at my yeah, parents' so house. more presents to put under the already packed tree. And I have another present that I just got for Giselle that's driving her crazy because she has no idea what it is. Same. That I have not... You have another present for me? Yeah. I bought it a few weeks ago, but I've been having it... I've had it at work. Oh. And I wanted to sneak it home, so I snuck it home just now. Oh, jeez. So I need to wrap that as well. Okay, well, there's one that I need to wrap. It's quite big and needs to go into the tree. But we have a lot of stuff to bring to Maryland with she us. She also sent a little package, and she said, make sure you open it on camera. Okay, so she okay. also sent a little note. Oh, oh that's yeah. so cute. She sent us uh, one of her dad, Giselle's dad's uh, snowflakes that he makes, which are really, really cool and very, like, intricate and nicely made. Giselle and I a couple years ago were like did a live stream like trying to follow the technique of this and like make some and it was really difficult but they're really cool so. And she also just said they've lived they lived in their last home for like close to 30 years uh for like 25 years and they just recently moved and they feel so happy where they're at and they're outside all the time and constantly exercising and enjoying life and then also this picture was drawn by um karen you've heard me talk about her like 80 billion times yeah um of christ and you i don't know <sighs> anyway karen yeah yeah, we, we talked about Talk Karen. about Karen, yeah. who, if you're wondering, I'm like sobbing if you don't know who she is. She passed away two, three years ago from last month. So, anyway. There's also this little thing. This is what she got for us when she was in... Was she, was she in France, I think, when she got these? I don't know. <laughs> the B.I. That was perfect. I oh, didn't even don't... see that her names were oh, written on them. Oh, I didn't see them. her names were on them either. But they're um, like little... Uh, ornaments I guess she bought from from I, there. I think she might have gotten these in London she said. I don't remember exactly where she said she got these but either France or London or yeah so one of those two which is really cool but yeah they're so cute. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll hang these up. Thank you so much. Yeah we can put them on the tree right now. Yeah our tree is so full I don't know where to put them. I'll put my chick right here. <laughs> okay I guess they don't 
need to go next to each other. Oh, you can put your dude right there. Oh, yeah, okay. And then I'll just put this little girl down here. Um, perfect. You can't see them. So there they are. They're yeah. so cute. Thank you, Mom. And thank you, Dad. Oh, they're so cute. <laughs> Mine's so adorable. And yours has such a cute, goofy little face. It does have a little goofy face. <laughs> oh, thank you. And yes. we're, I'm really excited about the present. She, all she told me is that they're not actually pajamas which i don't know what that means well a couple years ago they weren't actually pajamas either they were just they were like a shirt and sweatpants those are still pajamas though yeah so i'm just confused as to what it is but we'll have to wait until christmas eve to find out yes we'll find out normally that. we open all our presents on christmas day but these ones we open christmas eve so we can like wear them yeah. the night before and we'll be, we'll be vlogging all of Christmas at Mar in Maryland, so obviously. So you'll, you'll see, see what they are in... About 10 days. Yeah. Which reminds me, tomorrow we're going to see the Nutcracker. Today, well, Giselle just got home from work. She was supposed to work until 9, but it was not very busy. And so she came home early. I was home all day today. I, I don't know. If, I think it's mostly worn off, but my mouth was very slack-jawed all day today. Because I went to the dentist this morning to get a cavity filled. And my mouth just feels super weird. I have to go again in January to get one filled on this side. Ah. I had Noki for the first time today. No Noaki? How do you say that? The little Jap- like, I, th I think they're Japanese. The little, like, potato, um... I have no idea what you're talking about. Noodle things? They're like faux noodles made out of potatoes. If I'm saying it totally wrong, I apologize. I've never had them before. No Gnocchi? 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 I think that's how you say know. it. And today when I got to work, I, w I just, like, mentioned, I'm like, man, I'm really hungry. Like, I forgot to eat before I came to work, and I'm just not feeling great. And Nicole was like, I have some in the back. Do you want some? And I was like, sure. So I had it for the first time. They're little, like, lumps of heaven. <laughs> They're okay. so good. And it was perfect because my mouth is still, like, really sore because I was just at the dentist yesterday. Yeah. I can't really chew on either side right now. And so being able to eat those, they just, like, melt in your mouth pretty much. Nice. So that was, like, the perfect thing to eat. Nicole will never see this, but thank you, Nicole. I really appreciate it. They were delicious. <laughs> So um, we eat just gnocchi if Giselle you're took off. <laughs> Giselle took off tomorrow to go to the Nutcracker. So Giselle's not going to work tomorrow, and we're going to be spending the whole day together tomorrow. We still have some stuff to figure out, like what we're doing. But tomorrow the Nutcracker happens, and we're very excited. And uh, I'm going to see this Into the Spider Verse, Spider-Man Into the, Into the Spider Verse again tonight. I went and saw it last night. I posted an Instagram post about it and kind of posted my thoughts a little bit. I loved it, it was amazing, and I'm gonna go see it again tonight. A little bit earlier than I originally planned because Giselle, Giselle is home earlier than I thought she would be. So, we will see you tomorrow. All right, so we are now in Boston. We're in the parking garage. We, it's been a very interesting day. Uh, a day that meant to start earlier than it actually did. Uh, I like couldn't fall asleep at all last night whatsoever. I was just like rolling around, my eyes closed, but my brain wide awake and woke up super late today Giselle has been up for a while and then we ended up like falling asleep again we ended up like taking a nap and then waking up like a half hour before we meant to leave uh and we went to leave at 3 30. we ended up leaving till 4 but that's totally fine we're here at 4 45 the show doesn't start till 7 30 but we're gonna go get dinner for him and we wanted to get to the restaurant by five and it's just like a five minute walk so we're totally good on that we gave us we were planning on giving ourselves a lot of time uh and we did and we ended up needing it. But Giselle's finishing up putting her makeup on and she's so excited. She's been like freaking out this entire time. I'm super excited. It's gonna be the best thing ever. We've been listening to the music and stuff on the way here and she's been like turning it up like <laughs> every few minutes just to like hear parts a little bit more and Yeah, it's like been great. I know all the parts that get quiet, so as soon as I know that they're coming, I'll like turn it up so we can hear them because a lot of the quiet parts are the best parts. A lot of the loud parts of the best parts, the whole thing is the best parts. And she was just like talking about how much she like feels like crying while listening to music. So she's like, oh, I shouldn't have put, put on makeup. I'm going to be crying during the show and stuff. Although I'm really happy with actually how my makeup turned out, except for maybe my lipstick. But I don't know, maybe because I had more time or maybe because it's dark and I can't tell the flaws. But I'm like, this looks really good, actually. But we're all dressed up. I'm all dressed up. And we're gonna go walk over to the restaurant. We're going to this place called Yvonne's. So that place was actually gonna take a little bit longer than we wanted to. And so we ended up at this place called Back Deck, which was really good. I'm really glad we ended up there. It uh, tasted really good. Giselle had andouille sausage and I had steak tips, garlic steak tips. We both had mashed potatoes. We ended up having 
this really good dessert. It was called Nutcracker Sweets. So I did end up eating some carbs tonight, which is fine, I guess. And then we went to Primark down the street because we had plenty of time and we bought some things, but we also got me a bow tie, a Christmassy bow tie, which we had planned on doing before, but we couldn't really find one anywhere. And we really liked this one, so we got it. And I changed into it before we went to the performance. And then we went and saw the Nutcracker. So, the show's over, and we are back, about to leave. What did you think? <laughs> um... I asked her that in the middle, so we there's an intermission. I asked her that in the middle, and she wasn't like super loving it then, and she was hoping the second half would be better. I really liked the first, like, just from the first half perspective. Like, from my perspective, I really, I've never seen it before. She's seen it several times before. I really liked the staging a whole lot, the costumes, and the like general uh, staging meaning yeah. the actual like set yeah the sets and stuff and the actual staging of like the people Giselle <laughs> didn't love like the choreography or what was happening at the beginning but yeah I don't know it just like the music was really good too it was it was it was a pretty good music performance like it was pretty good but it wasn't like amazing mm -hmm. i feel like it wasn't balanced super well so there were a lot of times that like percussion would start and i'm like that's so loud in comparison to everything else when it's supposed to be during this very soft scene like it just wasn't balanced super well in my opinion in some places but overall it was pretty good i did not like the choreography there was like a few things that were good but overall I don't know, just like the staging of the people, especially in the first half, it felt very cluttered. Like there were just so many people on the stage doing all these different things that it there was hard of, to tell what the focus was supposed yeah, to be. Yeah, there were a lot of people and it was hard to tell what the focus was And sometimes. even like when, during that scene that is in the second act, it's, it's usually a lot more performers, the one that had the one guy and the two girls and then like the little sheep in the background. Yeah. It's like, it's supposed to be this dance with this guy and these two girls, and there's, I, there's like supposed to be like shepherdesses in the background that literally do nothing, they just stand there. And sheep, that there was this section where this guy was doing these really cool jumps and like really tight like spins, like two mm -hmm. or three spins in the air and landing really well. And there's all these just little sheep running around them, so you can't even see what he was doing with his feet because there'd be little sheep running around. And it's just like whoever choreographed it just didn't know how to like focus on something to make it really stand out and so they he felt like he yeah, constantly did, had to throw all this extra stuff it in. did feel like there was a lot going on a lot of the time yeah. when it felt like there was supposed to be a focus somewhere but we kind of lose it at yeah a lot of points. because there's so many other things going on stage all the time even in like the quiet moments yeah or the focused moments so i don't know and also i feel like he also whoever choreographed this is very like repetitive so there's motifs that he really likes and then he doesn't know how to get out of that and so there's a lot of times when like one person does something and then in the pet next pass the second person does the exact same thing and then the third person the fourth person like and sometimes they're all doing the same thing together or sometimes one person's doing something then the next person will do it and this person's doing something else and then that person will do the thing that they were doing and they do it a lot and it's just like can you find anything else to do please like i was fine with it like the first like three times and then after that i'm like please find another thing to do like because this has already happened so many times do you know what i'm talking about yeah sort of there were so many times that that happened probably in like seven different songs and i was like okay, find a new toy to play with because it's getting a bit old. I don't know. <sighs> I don't know. I don't mean to sound ungrateful. This was, like, such an incredible gift, and I really loved the, like, 
experience and the going on this wonderful date. Yeah. And I did enjoy listening to the music, but that was like another part is I hate and I honestly at this point I should just say this from now on and look it up. I like I just think I want to refuse to go to anything, any ballet or opera or whatever. Where clapping's allowed. I hate it. I hate it so much. Because especially with Especially when people obviously don't know when things are ending and when things are like supposed like where things are in the music and like Giselle was like we were listening to it beforehand and Giselle was like explaining things to me and like it is really distracting when the audience decides to clap three times in the span of 20 seconds because they like what the dancers are doing it's like there's a lot more happening right now than just the dancing and you should not be clapping over top of the music music and because Sometimes, and then they would be clapping so loud that they couldn't hear that something was happening with the music, so they'd just miss this whole section of music, because they have no idea. I don't know. I feel like if you're ever going to go see a performance of some musical piece, it's your duty to educate on yourself on it beforehand so that you don't do that. Like, I refuse to clap during it. Unless, like, it's different when it's in the second act when it's a performance within a performance. So the people are performing within the performance, and so they make bows and stuff like that. But then you clap at the very end of the thing, but people were, like, trying to clap all over the place, and it was just like... There was this one (laughs) lady especially that was, like, sitting, like, a a row back into the side of us who literally clapped, like, 18 times during the pas de Like, just her. Nobody else was clapping because everybody else got, this is the most beautiful song ever. Let's not clap in the middle so we can actually hear it. Yeah. And she just, like, just her alone clapped so many times, like, every 15 seconds during the pas de And, like, what are you doing, lady? That is distracting. (laughs) I think, I think, like, what's different for some things, like, musicals, like, they... This is just like with a ballet. I feel like especially it's just very and espe- and with an orchestra performance. You, if you go to perform like sorry, if you go see an orchestra performance, someone like just an orchestra on stage performing something, you don't clap every time you think something cool happens in the music. You clap when you're supposed to clap, and usually don't even clap in between the movements. Yeah. And like they'll tell you, don't clap in between the movements. And most people who go out to see something like that would know not to clap in between movements. Yeah. And this is all one. It's, it's one piece that has some slight pauses or whatever, but you're not supposed to clap there. That's not the point. Yeah. So. And it's like every time someone, like, in the Waltz of the Flowers, every time, like, the big flower, the main flower, would, like, run off, scre- off stage because she does that a lot, and she does that in every performance of it, people would just clap every time she left. And I'm like, have you learned nothing from the last six times she's left the stage? She will be back in like 15 seconds and then you're gonna clap again when she leaves again like what are you doing well i don't know we it's... i don't know it was i re- like we we had a fun time coming out like the, the whole just getting to spend time with chris and like actually going on this lovely date was like so much of a better it was really it was really fun to like prepare for this we were like we've been listening to the music together the past couple weeks and giselle's been like talking to me about it and telling me about times she's seen it before and like what she's hoping for and then tonight we well, our first like dinner plan like didn't quite work out and like that's was my fault we I didn't th- I've never had to make a reservation for a restaurant before like ever and so like I didn't even think about it until yesterday and so I didn't because <laughs> I'm silly but we we did we went to the first place when then it, we couldn't do it and then we went to the second place and it was really good and I was we were really excited really happy about it and we went to the performance, and it was really fun to, like, be there together. As someone who went for the first time ever, seeing this for the first time ever performed, I actually quite liked it. Like, oh, I'm glad. <laughs> but, like, I understand a lot of your... Like, I could tell while we were... Like, based on what she's told me about this and before, like, in the le- weeks leading up to this, I could tell during it that there are things like I don't think Giselle's gonna like parts of this very much like while I'm watching I'm like I don't think Giselle's liking this very much because I could tell there are certain aspects of it that she loves and this this choreographer or whoever directed it whatever whoever put themselves into it definitely took some liberties with how they were doing it and which is fine in some regards like it's always gonna be like different choreography but if you just like completely I don't know like the opening 
like of it what is that called the intro or whatever i guess the overture well, overture there we go so the overture most ballets and everything like that is like it's very it's supposed to get you like ready for the rest of the performance and then instead of just letting you like enjoy that and like get it set up and get that like hype going they had like some random little like thing with Clara walking around in the streets with a bunch of like beggars and urchins walking around a fireplace and being really distracting and then it was just hard to focus on the music because I'm like what is happening why are they doing this and then there was and then Uncle Drossemeyer was all of a sudden like there and he's like showing all the like beggar children his like nutcracker and stuff and I'm like what are you doing like where did this come from I don't know I just I wish that sometimes they would just like stick to the classics because I mean this piece I think came out in the 80s the 1880s like if it's endured that long and has had been popular for that long and has been performed worldwide for over a century we don't need your new interpretations to like spice it up because obviously it's fine on its own I don't know and I feel like that way about like there were just like a lot of like treat cheap tricks there was a lot of weird like <laughs> laugh moments at the beginning in the first act yeah I noticed that as well that I was I found it really out of place just like they were, they were doing a lot of like slapstick comedy yes. on stage uh with a lot of the different things and it was very not what I was expecting and I was like Giselle like looked at me once and I was like okay like she was like <laughs> she was like what is this and I was like okay so this isn't normal like, like <laughs> this seems really strange some of the stuff they're doing right now but like sometimes the grandma does fall down and that I have seen before but like there was like literally a part where the character where a character like broke the fourth wall and like waved to the audience after doing something funny and I was like what? The first the first <laughs> act had a lot of those like weird slapstick comedy funny moments and I kind of get what they were trying to do with it like kind of make it more of a dynamic thing where it's not just like people watching people dance and like they're trying to add some like humor to it but it was a little bit over the top and yeah, it, it felt kind of out of place. It feels but, like it's cheapening it which yeah. I'm not like a huge fan of but I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. What, this is our like very honest review of the nut, the Boston Ballet Nutcracker but uh, it's I don't know. Overall, I don't yeah. recommend. I think if I'm ever going to have to see this... I, I think if I'm ever going to see this live again, I'm going to have to, like, hold out for people who are actually really good. <laughs> as I mean, harsh as that sounds, like... I don't know. Well, I mean, I, I didn't know anything. I just got the thing that seemed like the most... Nice like the, the, the like area. the Yeah, like Boston Ballet, like, at the Boston Opera House seemed really official and really great, and it was, like, a very big production, and I, like yeah. I said, I really love the sets and the staging and stuff. And the costuming but... was beautiful. I don't know. I think I'm going to have to hold out for, like, an overseas performance, though. Like, something, like, spectacular, like Russian Ballet. But, like, something like that where it's, like, even more so, and hopefully they'll, like, not let the audience clap, and that people who are going to see something, like, that prestigious... Mm -hmm. would like appreciate it more yeah and hopefully the performance would be better because like i'm sure the dancers are excellent but i didn't like this director yeah unfortunately choreographer yeah. yeah and it i don't know it's all my opinion i know i'm overly picky on this but like i've never had such a strong problem with the dancing before i more so have problems with like the costumes and oh one more thing Uncle Drossemeyer, like, I think he must have just been, like, a really famous, like, dancer or something, because they shoved him in wherever they could. Like... He was in the whole thing, yeah. He, yeah, he, they... And instead of, like, normally they'll have, like, Clara and, like, the Nutcracker prince, like, sit on the back watching the performances, and this time they had Uncle Drossemeyer, and the prince wasn't even there the whole time. And I'm like, but this is his palace. The whole point is that this is the prince's palace. He's home, free of his enchantment. And now he's, like, thanking Clara by having his subjects perform. And nope, instead it's just Uncle Drossemeyer hanging out with Clara in the back and, like, doing dances with her. So I think he just must have I been, mean, like, popular and they must have, like, had to, like, well, we're going to get our money's worth out of this guy and put him in as much as possible wherever we possibly can. I mean, can. I, if Giselle hadn't pointed out to me, then I would have never have known that that wasn't normal. I mean, it wasn't <laughs> distracting at all or anything. It was just, I guess, a little bit off than what it normally is. I found but, it distracting, but I don't as know. Someone who's <laughs> never, as, I'm saying, as someone who's never seen this before, I 
the only thing that seemed out of place was some of the slapstick comedy stuff in the first act. But yeah. everything else I thought was good, but... I'm sorry you didn't like it. <laughs> I'm really sorry. I'm so <laughs> glad we went, though. And yeah. I, it was so incredibly sweet. I'm so glad we went. I still had yeah. a really good time. Yeah. I just think I'm too picky for a performance that isn't, like, up to, like, my standards. Because <laughs> apparently I'm too picky. Maybe I'll have to wait for California again or something. Yeah. <laughs> About dinner, though. What do you think of dinner? Dinner was really good. Dinner I was loved so it. good. I, I don't know. I'm really glad we ended up going to the place we went to instead of the place that we were going to go to. Because the other place was, like, it was super dark. You couldn't see anything. Yeah. It was just, like, a ton of people, like, sitting around drinking. And it felt very, like, claustrophobic and cramped. And then, like, this place was a lot more open and bright. And the food was so good. It was really good. Everything was delicious. The mashed potatoes were really good. I didn't put salt on my mashed potatoes, if that tells you how good they were and how well seasoned they were. And the... It was so cute. Nutcracker Sweets. Like, can you think of a cuter name? Nutcracker Sweets. Yeah. <laughs> it's so cute. And it was the perfect thing to eat before seeing the Nutcracker. And it was like a... There was like two pistachio cookies. Uh, Coconut. Macaron. Macaron. And, and uh, some like ice cream thing. Yeah, like an ice cream fudge. Cream puff thing. Cream puff, yeah. Cream puff thing. And that actually was... <laughs> So you might have seen the face I made, and Chris was like, "Oh, is it know. that good?" I don't know. I don't know if they caught it, if I caught it on camera or not. But it. I it... made a very like dramatic face, and it's because we went to the dentist recently. Both she went. Of us. She went on Thursday. I went on Friday, and the yeah. cold kind of affected our our teeth a little bit. Yeah, but... I went to the dentist last week over here, and then this week over here. So this, they're both very cold sensitive. Still, this one's a little bit better, but I have a temporary in here. So it's like, I took a bite, and I'm like. Oh, that was so painful. <laughs> it tastes so good, but that was so painful. But it was, they were really good, especially the, like, pistachio cookies were oh, so good. But Christopher's the best ever, and I love him, and he's so <laughs> sweet for doing this, and I'm really, really happy and pleased. And, like, I'm really glad that I got to show him something that I really love. But now I feel like I should go and find, like, an incredible performance, like, on YouTube or something, and make him watch that, too. Okay. <laughs> Supplementary content. We just got back from the ballet, and, like we mentioned, we got Christopher's bow tie at Primark, and we got some other stuff at Primark as well. I've been wanting to go to Primark since beauty gurus became, like, a thing, and I saw them talking about, like, L, not L, gosh, what's her name? Fleur, Fleur de Force, like, talking about Primor Primark over in the UK and how she'd go there and get the cutest things, and I've always wanted to go, and now they have some in America, and there's some pretty close to us, but there's one in Boston, right next to the Boston Opera House, and we happened to be right by it, so I was like, we have to go in, and Chris is like, I'm um, okay, I don't really know what it is, and we got some of the cutest stuff, so the first thing that I got... Everything there is like really inexpensive too. It's this adorable little like mini mouse hat, which is like the gosh darn cutest thing I've ever seen in my whole life. I don't own any like baseball caps at all. I just like took out my earrings so it would look a little less funky. And I think it'll be super cute with a little ponytail at Disney. Like if Chris wants to not wear his ears one day or wants to wear a hat I'll with his ears on top or something. Yeah, I I'll probably wear hats some days and like my ears other days. We're yeah. gonna be there for 10 days so there's lots of opportunity. So. Yeah, and I thought, I don't know, I thought they were really cute and adorable and I like them a lot so I was really excited when I saw it and I was just like I don't know I wouldn't normally but it's like seven dollars I can't help myself and then um, I ended up getting a shirt which I think is so stinking cute and it just has Harry Potter glasses on it and says H. H. Potter. Potter and I just thought it was like really simple minimalist and something it was like long enough that I feel like I can comfortably wear it with like leggings out and about if I'm feeling more like wanting to be covered and then Christopher got a Harry Potter shirt as well Hufflepuff. this one yeah and it has a little Huff. Hufflepuff details on the sleeves that are like a ribbon sewed on and then it just says Hufflepuff on the front and has hard work and the thing proud like, Hufflepuff <laughs> super minimalist I thought about getting like the Slytherin one or something but I was like I already got a Harry Potter shirt I'm fine and like Christopher's shirt was like $12 and my shirt I think was like eight seven seven dollars so cute and then we also got the bow tie which came on this cute little card and uh we saw it and i was like oh, a bow tie and i wore we been looking for one. <laughs> <laughs> originally he was wearing this tie which i wore my outfit to purposely match yeah i mean yeah it, <laughs> and <laughs> we did well we've been looking for bow ties and 
We were just yeah, happy to see one, and I didn't even think about it until after I'd already put the bow tie on that Giselle had matched her outfit to me. But. It's okay. My my nails still matched, and we got a little shot of me, like, holding your tie, I think, and it looked it looked nice. And I almost ended up getting, like, a Harry Potter bag, but I decided last second not to, because um, I'm trying to show self-restraint. But we did buy one other thing, not at Primark, but at the actual ballet which I'm so excited about. So up here, right here, I can grab her. This is my favorite ornament of all time. This Clara with the Nutcracker. I'm obsessed oh, wow. with this it's, ornament. It's so similar. It's, yeah, and it's so cute. And I've just been obsessed with this ornament since I got it. I, my mom probably got it for me when I was 10. And I loved it so much that I wouldn't put it away with the Christmas ornaments. I would leave it out in my bedroom hanging all year long because I love the Nutcracker and I love this ornament so much. Each that year, she ended up getting like a little set of Nutcracker people. So I got Clara, my sister got like the Sugar Plum Fairy, someone got the Nutcracker, someone got the Mouse King, et cetera, et cetera. And so we ended up getting this ornament, which I'm really excited about. They are a little bit different, but this one's like a bigger version of Clara. So here is a, another Clara. Holding a nutcracker. Holding a nutcracker. And if you call her Maria, come at me. <laughs> She's always like, if this, if her name isn't Clara on the program, then we're leaving. <laughs> but it was. <laughs> so anyway, there they are together. And I love them both. And they're both really adorable. And uh, even though the performance wasn't my favorite, this is still like a really beautiful ornament, but I don't know. Now she has like a big sister version and I just thought it was like a very beautifully sculpted version as well. I was so tempted to buy another Nutcracker ornament earlier this year when I saw one, but she just had like a kind of ugly sculpt face and I was like, ooh. <laughs> so anyway, there they are. They're beautiful and I'm very happy about them. So like right before we saw the performance earlier, we both got this message on Twitter and so I mean we saw these when we left earlier but we were about to leave so we just left them in our stairway but now we're back so we can open them and we have no idea what they are none whatsoever let me get some scissors so I think at least one of these is from Judas I don't know which one or maybe both I don't know I feel spoiled oh this is not for me. <laughs> it's not? It says Giselle Rose in the box. Let's see. What does it say in here? Hey, Chris. Merry Christmas. I hope you don't have this one yet, and I hope you like it. I'm excited to see you and Jill do some Let's Plays from Judith. <gasps> <gasps> it's Firefighter Mickey. I love it. That's really cute. I adore it. It's black and white, <laughs> and it's great. Oh, I love this so much. Thank you. Oh my goodness. I yes. very much appreciate it. That's the greatest thing ever. I'm totally, this is definitely going on the shelves behind me with all my other Mickeys. I love it. <laughs> That's really cool. It's an Alice in Wonderland puzzle. Wow. Oh, it's a stained glass. That's really, really pretty. It is really pretty. Oh gosh. 500 pieces. Oh, that's perfect. I really like that a lot. I like, do too. So much. Oh my gosh. I feel bad because I still haven't done the, the one that she sent like two years ago. I I don't know. I partially... Well, I mean, it's been on your Alice shelf the entire time. So. Yeah. Like I partially... I've started it and I was just like, we didn't have enough room because I think it's a, like a 1,000 piece one and we're just like, didn't have room. This is so pretty and there's sure... On the back, it has a few other, like, well, one other example that are ones that are, like, Disney princesses that's also really pretty. That's really cool. So, I don't know, these these stained art, yeah, they called the stained art jigsaw puzzles. These are so cool. Oh, I like that a lot. Thank you so much. You're so cute. You, you don't, you're such a spoiler for us. <laughs> <laughs> we don't, we don't deserve it. Thank you. <laughs> and that's actually our first ever, like, real Funko Pop. Like, we have one that is, like, a baby Gru up there, but he's, like, a bobblehead one. Yeah, we don't have we don't have a lot of Funko Pops. So we have a little bit yeah. mostly Sum Sum stuff. So, I, like, I would love to have lots of Mickey, uh, especially, Funko Pops. Cause, yeah. Or Disney in general. But 
Same. Yeah, it was definitely something we've been thinking about starting to collect. And she left a little note in mine as well, which says, Hey Giselle, Merry Christmas. I saw this puzzle and thought it looked gorgeous. Hope you don't have it and that it fits on your coffee table. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You're so cute. Because <laughs> uh, the other one didn't. Um, I'm sure it will because it's the same size as the other ones we've been doing, even though it feels super light. It does. Oh, I'm so excited. Thank you so much, Judith. You're an absolute doll, and uh, tell fiance we say thanks as well. I don't know if he even knows who we are, but we appreciate them. <laughs> well, it was a fun night out together. Uh, Giselle didn't love the performance. I, like, I, from what I, like, knew of ballet going in, like, was hardly nothing at all. So, like, I enjoyed it for what it was and whatever. But we'll probably go see another performance some years down the line. Hopefully, hopefully sometime in the, in the near future we'll get to see a really good performance and... Giselle is like, made, was like making sure on the way back, she's like, I really had fun though. <laughs> Just so you know, I really had fun though. And yeah, we're, it was a bit of a roast there of the uh, Boston Ballet Nutcracker, but it was still a really fun time to get to go with it together and eat the food that we ate and then go see the, see the performance and hang out and have like a little date night. And yeah, <laughs> we were really glad to get to go. So, and tomorrow we're going we're gonna to go together to go see the new Spider-Man movie, which I've already seen twice, but Giselle's agreed to go see it with me in theaters, so I'm excited about that. But thank you guys so much for watching, and we will see you very soon with more.